Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks and feet and preparation combined The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Ryle representing for I Just Star Mindset Rich forever Mindset Blessed love, manners and respect I want to greet the item in the divine name of his imperial majesty Emperor Eel Celestia the first Empress Men in the first Another day above ground and we're giving thanks and praise for our ultimate position which is life We're live and direct in Ghana, Accra or so and we're here with a very special guest and the platform today a brother that um is making some real positive moves zine in terms of movement throughout um, the continent also as a sound engineer music engineer and a sound system operator zine we have russ Sila. Did yes. I get that right? Yes, I Zylo. Zylo. Like the xylophone. Xylophone. Yeah. To my last. So, well, welcome the man to the yes, Mindset sir. Program. I just uh, bless the love. The mindset is real, you know? Yes, sir. So, me give thanks to you. Yes, my brother. Yeah. Manners and respect, as I say, it's great to have the eye on the platform. But they are in a Ghana. Zin, the eye is a Rastafari virgin who. Um, Left on the mission of the king, Zin, and um, also and a mission of making good, positive reggae music. Zin, talk to me about the I journey into you know what the I is today. You know, a Rastafari. Yes, yeah. We give thanks, I just uh, first and foremost for you coming all the way from London to Ghana, Africa. And we still, you know, appreciate whatever you've been doing and we've been seeing, you know. It's a great work you put out there. So we give thanks for the Almighty bringing you forward. Yes, so hear me now. Yes, Ghana we did. And um, the name Zylo representing. Africa Unite Sound System. You see me? Yeah, so it's been a journey. I just that. Uh, it's been a real good journey, you know, joyful one. You know, through obstacles, you know, through this and that, but we're still making it good. And we give thanks for that. And um, I and I really glad that I'm in this position. As a now, you know, doing all the works to fulfill the, the, the movement of Rastafari. You know, so I give thanks all the time for the burgeons around me and everybody coming in and going out, you know. It's full of energy, you know, and I like the way the work are going. Easy at the time, you know, and we know we are going to get there, as you just say. So anyway, the journey good, you know, and through music, we've met a lot of people. Like you, I just start, uh, you know, and we give thanks still, and so we're still moving on, and um, it's been a good journey, like I said, um, traveling all the way to Ethiopia, you know, going through some tours with the sound system, you know, visiting places, you know, knowing what it is to be a Rastafarian, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's all about the mindset, like you said. So, I personally work as an engineer, sound engineer, a mixing engineer, you know, and um, I have a lot of production also coming out, you know, reggae production and then this real African reggae mm -hmm. production, you know, because um, we've listened a lot from the people in the West and what they're saying, and we think Africans have it. And we are the ones they talk about so we have to talk more of what they don't know and we have everything here of what they don't know in the West so I am a promoter same way promoting reggae music here and there DJing playing here and there you know 
traveling, making rounds, and you know, doing my thing as a sound man. And um, everything perfect up till now, you know, having um, a studio, the Africa Ionity Studio, which is based in Accra. Yeah, so everything right. What is based in Accra now is what was also based in Cape Coast. What happened to the studio that was in Cape Coast? Yeah. Talk to me about that experience. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, sometimes, like I said before, obstac obstacles come in, you know, and that, that has been one of the greatest obstacles me have faced in life, you know, but through Rastafari say so, we have to be strong in anything that happens to us. We only have to give thanks for life, you know, so we just give thanks for Jah for giving me more life still, staying strong and bringing out more and more and more in me. Yeah, it happened the same way, you know, about, um, let me say, October last two years, is it two years? Last year, yeah, last year, last year, October last year. Yeah, we we started a project about Door of Return Reading. This is a reading that we produce. Me and my, my engineers, we produced that reading. It was very good reggae roots reading and that was, you know, heavy. So, through some processes, we had some artists coming in from Accra to Cape Coast to record, be on the reading voice out and do all them things. But anyway, on a very not good day, early morning, we wake up with a call like the shop is burning, the studio is burning, everything is burning. And I was like, wow, what is happening? So yeah, a brother just, you know, approached me with a motorbike, you know, coming to pick me up so I, I can quickly get to the place you see me so yeah i saw the brother on the road and he picked me with a motorbike from my god there about 5 a.m in the morning the whole thing is already done yeah already done into ashes already into ashes everything you know my vinyls because i'm a collector too i collect vinyls you know i play vinyls and you know a lot a whole lot you know so anyway we just give thanks and you know see see to the Almighty because we know we have better things ahead and that's what everybody keep telling me you know everybody come to me oh, Zylo Zylo this so for we say yeah all right so all so, right. so how, how, how that make you how, how, how you how you view that because you must have been putting in a lot of work you know to to have so much equipment. You know your vinyls, which you know is is not easy to collect or to come by these days. Or, or, or you view what what took place? Do you think it's someone did it intentionally, or it's a freak accident? Or, or, or you see? Yeah. Well, um, for me, um, I can't say much about that because nobody come out with anything yet and from um from we call the fire service people you know from the time that the, the shop are burned the fire service people already did it so them say them them go check everything out but they never give us any report if it was something maybe electrical fault or something from the shop they could have said oh yo this is what happened or watch out for this that and that you see me so Apart from them, we never hear nothing again. But we still give thanks, you know, because life is, is, is the most important thing. Life is the most important. For my half life, we know say we can have a lot of things, you know, more than that. More and more. True, my lord. Yeah. So now you're officially based in, um, in Accra. Accra, yeah. Accra. See? All things, all things is looking up now. Yeah, things already looking bright, you know. Things already looking bright, so we still um, making voices and putting voices on the reading. 
because the studio is set newly in the crowd now. You know, cause we give thanks to you know all the virgins supporting me still through all those tragedies and all that. You know, we give thanks for them. You know, to any ways they, they, they keep up them support. A lot of people would have give up. Yeah. What 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 keep you going? I know what you're saying. You get the support from your friends and you know your brothers and team. You know, other than that, what what has kept you going? What have 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 have, have you know? Giving you that, you know, inner zeal to keep, to keep going because someone, you know, would have, you know, many give people up. would have given up. Yeah, I just uh, give thanks for this question, you know, because you and I know Jaw works can done. Yeah, we can finish the work. So why can we? Why should we just stop it? Yeah, like I said, for more half life, we can do more, and more is coming up. So, you talk about um, the year of, not the year of return, the the, the door of the return. door of return. Yeah, see, Ghana previously, I think probably about four years ago, had the year of return, which was in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, oh, oh! You see that as a as a Rastafari that born on the continent. Oh, 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 oh! Do you see that? You think it's a good move by by the government to um, change how Ghanaians um, look on ones in the diaspora because. Before the president did that year of return, he went to Jamaica and he apologized for the role that Ghanaians played in, in slavery. Right? Oh, oh, you know, oh, the eyes in the whole thing. One thing, one thing where I know from my grew up as a Rastafari is um, through Marcus Garvey, through the teachings of Marcus Garvey, I know that repatriation is a must. You know, so no matter how we do, we must make sure the people come back to Africa. You know, and if we don't put in our works, then they are not ready to come in. They already know they have to come in, but they, they don't have any relation with us. Not at all. They don't have any relations with at, at, at all. Because the white people come in more than them. So it go look like still slavery are gone. You see? So repatriation, that's what Marcos Garvey said. Repatriation is a must. So this government is putting up a very good job. It's a clean, good work, you know, and there's enough people coming in now. So you think it was a good initiative, the 2019 year of return? Do you think we need to see more African countries um, doing, if not the similar, but the same um, thing that Ghana have done. Oh yeah, they should because even last time I was even reasoning with um, um, Panafest, someone, one of the chairman of Panafest. You know, I was reasoning with him and I was telling him about maybe how we can, he can even organize Panafest somewhere in Senegal, somewhere in Gambia. You understand? Because it has always been Ghana. Even though, yeah, people know that Ghana is a gateway. It's where ma uh, most of the slaves was taken away, majority, you know, because they bring them out of <coughs> other countries to Ghana. But yes, still, when you talk about repatriation, it's Africa. It's not only Ghana. So, Panafest must be happening. Even if it is happening in Ghana here, there must be some happening in Nigeria, in Senegal, in this, in that. Because not all of the people in the diaspora come from Ghana. 
true. Yeah, so it is one thing that if it's going on, you see Africa will be Africa. And everybody is going to spread around because me know people who are saying they are from Nigeria. But there's no Panafest in Nigeria. They don't know anything about Panafest. If they have something doing to repatriate, I don't know, but you know, I know about Panafest being the major and, thing. And, 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 and Panafest is what um, Ghana used to represent the Pan African vibe Vibes. and energy. Yes. So they must spread it around. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, the I have been to Ethiopia. Talk to me about that journey. Why? What, how, how did you end up in Ethiopia? Yeah. Well, that is a uh, one spiritual aspect of my life. Yeah, man. Talk because, to me about it. Because it's been a long, long time. Me reason about myself in Ethiopia. From I wasn't in this locks. Mm. Yeah. Me know, me know I was in Ethiopia. Yeah, because me read the Bible. Ethiopia was mentioned in the Bible a lot of times. More than anything, any country, Ethiopia was mentioned more than any country in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. So me are reasoning only like and what me are here from the news all the time, Ethiopia this, Ethiopia that. Ethiopia is poor, Ethiopia is this, they are facing this, they are facing that. All right. So, the mind was there about Ethiopia. So, I, when I fully, you know, was matured, you know, I just had to put myself in a journey. And I took my first journey, 2017. Yeah, to Ethiopia and the mission was to first of all see the church visit the churches in Ethiopia see it. yeah so Jawilin I was in Addis Ababa visited few churches went to Lalibela went to Bahadar you know I visited most of the cities even going to Abzum, you know, certain places, you know, it was a real good journey and the vibration was very high because everything was clear in my eyes. I saw everything clear. I reasoned with Ethiopian youth, you know, because they saw me as a Rastafarian and when, wherever they go, they call me. They even think I was a Jamaican. They call me hey, Jamaica, Jamaica. So when I started reasoning with them, I showed them that I'm Kwame Nkuma. Mm -hmm. I'm from Kwame Nkuma, Ghana. They say, oh, okay, mm -hmm. African, mm -hmm. African man. Mm -hmm. So they were even surprised, like, what is African man doing here in Ethiopia, in Africa? Mm -hmm. And most of the people there too, like the foreigners, diasporas, they were like, African man, what are you doing in Africa? <laughs> yeah, many people ask me that, and I was like, "Yo, I have because to travel to Africa. I have to travel to Africa. I have to see my land, see what what is going on, what what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. I want to see it to myself." So, how did you react to, you know, that that statement? Um, and 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 how? You know they perceive you you know in 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 a wrong perception because they perceive you to be as a jamaican, jamaican. rasta man yeah. coming from the west yes. but you know you're a born ghanaian rasta man a rastafari yeah. seen traveling through africa ending up in ethiopia or, 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 or did you react to yeah well um what i would say is that most most people even from ghana from west africa don't travel to east to the east 
even if they do maybe for business or something else but for my journey you know being around the indigenous people in Ethiopia like mingling around them and they knowing I'm from Ghana and I never met any Ghanaian over there so that kind of thing was beating up their mind you know and I made a lot of friends come come out of that you know good friends you know come out of that because they really know that I had a mission all right so the the, the, the talk that Rastafari has that Ethiopia specifically is Zion when you travel to Ethiopia did you have that um, what can I say? Did, did you have that perception of the place or did you have that feeling of Yeah, of, yeah, of just the place? me. I just, uh, you see me? You see the mindset. Yeah. And the mindset was there. So could you imagine we could have returned to Ethiopia three times if it wasn't nice? Or if it wasn't something that I really want to? Mm. You know, so, so you return three times. Three times, we are returned. That's the far right. So what what what, what Shashaman is like? I must have been to Shashaman. Yeah, yeah, me was in Shashaman all the time. You know, I I went there most of the time to reason with the elders. You know. Yeah. Yeah, because there was a big repatriation camp, like not the camp Shashaman, where Haile Selassie the gave land out grant. The, the land grant. Yeah. yeah. So the EWF. I, I was there, yeah, I was there, you know, I was reasoning with the EWF, some of the elders, you know, mm -hmm. and I stayed with some of the elders there, and um, it was, it was nice, but, you know, um, our sisters and brothers out there, they, they are still going through a lot of things that the government of Ethiopia is, now I, they think they give some of them their passport and their, you know, they grant them certain things so they can move rally around Ethiopia, but, it wasn't it wasn't so at first you know they were like kind of restricted because um so many so many boundaries you know been given to them in, in ethiopia but now i think everything is getting on along very good and um sasha mali is also getting smaller and smaller and smaller because some of the land has been taken like um from the um, from the indigenous people, like they they came taking the lands from the repatriators, you know, because they think it's their land, and um, these repatriators are just diasporas are just doing like farms and everything. They are not you know, they need space for their house and all that, you know. Mm. So 